Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So back to our API interview question series. I hope that, okay, these questions are helping you to crack some really good interviews and getting the proper knowledge about API and API testing and API automation. I thought of creating one more video today that uh, about the HTTP status code because something very important to know that how exactly the communication is happening between client and the server because clients send anything to the server and then it's server responsibility to get it back to the uh, client that okay with the proper information with the proper status code that the what is this that you are sending it to me is it a correct request or not if it is correct request what should be the response code if it is incorrect request what should be the response code so that the client can uh, use that particular response in a proper way client can identify the problem can, client can see the confirmation that, okay yeah this is the response that i'm getting from the server so it's very important to test those status code as well and really need to know that what are the important status codes which are available there in the http status code list so there are many use cases are there many status codes are there but it's not like you have to remember each and every status code so let's see what are the important status code today i have found one very good application i mean very good uh, url actually you can just uh, have a look over here you can just go to rest api tutorial.com there are many uh, status code which are already predefined over here so what exactly i'm going to talk about this is a simple diagram for your understanding that i have already uh, created i've already prepared that okay the client could be anything it could be a web client it could be a mobile client ios android or postman if you're using any rest client curl or browser or anything we are sending a request to the server and this is my server and the data is actually available in my database or you can say the resources are available in my database your user data account information or anything which are available in the database so it's a typical model view controller MVC uh, pattern you can see it over here. View means uh, to view the data. Controllers means to process the logic. The business logic is written over here. And the model means your data actually, the resources which are available in your database. It could be Oracle or MongoDB. So I'm sending one HTTP request to the server that, okay, hey, please take this particular request and what kind of response that you are getting. So response family means you can get 1xx, 2xx, 3x, 4x, and 5x. These kind of responses that you can get it from the server, it depends what kind of request that you are sending it. So let's see, these are the number of requests are available. The first family is 1xx information family. Just forget about that. We never use it actually. Like it's like intermediate response we are getting from the server. For example, let's see, I send a request to the server and then server says, okay, 100 continue. It's seeing that, okay, yeah, the client should continue with his request. This is intermediate response is used to inform the client that initial part of the request has been received and has not yet been rejected by the server. Okay, so that is like hardly we use these kind of uh, responses, but these are the intermediate. This is not the final response the client is getting it. Same thing, switching protocol, 102 processing, something like that. Okay, so these are the three basic stuff that you can uh, 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 you can just learn about it, about the 1xx. Not important for interview point of view also. Now let's talk about the 2xx success. This is obviously whenever the request is getting successfully done or something. So if you see all these star marks, right? And if you see at the end, the star means the top 10 HTTP status code we are going to talk about. I'll add some additional important status code also. According to my understanding, I'll try to explain that. And I'll give you some basic practical examples also. 200 okay response code means the success request is done. The request has been successfully done and uh, whatever that you are expecting that we will give you the response. For example, let's see for a get call and then get an entity corresponding to the request, resource is sent to the response and then sent in the form of response. It could be used for the post call also, trace call uh, also, but 200 means generally we use it. Yes, the request is successfully given to the server and uh, server has accepted that particular request or I would say the uh, request has been successfully done. So in that case, you will be 200 status code. For example, if you see the same thing in the postman. So let's go to one example with the postman. Let's say this is my uh, a typical get call. So I can just simply say, okay, fine. This is my get call where I really want to get n number of users for this particular server. So I'll simply hit this particular API and then here you are getting the response. See, it's sending the request and then we will be getting the response in the form of a JSON file that we are getting it over here. And the response code that we are getting 200 okay response code here. Okay, so now let's talk about the 201. 201 means the user or the resource that you are creating or the data that you are creating got successfully created. So you can just see that basic description that 
the request has been fulfilled and resulted in a new resource being created. For example, let's say I really want to create a new user. See, I'll show you practically. For example, it's a post call to create a user. So let's see, this is my post call. And I really want to create this particular user in the database. So I'm saying, okay, fine. With this particular uh, data, whatever response, I mean, request body that you have prepared, this is a JSON response. This is a post call. I want to create this particular uh, data. So let's send this particular request to the server. And then you should be getting 201 created. And here you can see that in my database requests, I mean, this particular user got created. And this is the response that we are getting along with the 201 created. Right. So 201, you will be getting from the server side to the client. It's a success a response code, but the resource got created. So if you are sending only 200, that is not the sufficient response code. I, I ideally server should send 201 whenever you are creating any account or any user or any entity that you are creating with the help of post call. Then let's talk about something. Let's see 202 accepted. That is again, request has been accepted for the processing, but the processing has not been completed yet. Right? So in that case, you will be getting 202 accepted. Maybe the request is uh, taking some time from the server and server will take some time to give the response back to the client. So intermediate response is coming from the server that, okay, fine, 202 accepted has not been completed. Okay, might or might eventually be acted upon and then it might be disallowed when processing actually takes place. It might be possible, okay, the server will not accept it later on or maybe server will, uh, you know, give some uh, other response, something like this. But if you really want to send a quick response to the user that, okay, yeah, your request has been accepted for the processing, but the processing has not been completed yet. Not that important, but generally most of the time we will be using 200 OK and 201 created. Then what about 204? No content. 204 means the server has fulfilled the request, but does not need to return any entity body or any response body. The server will request, server will send the response that, okay, fine, uh, 204, no content. For example, let's say I want to delete a specific user. I'll show you practically. For example, let's say this is the user that we created, right? 3135 is the ID. I want to delete the same user now. So let's go to the delete call. This is a delete call. And let's say I'm writing here 3, 1 and 3, 5. And I want to delete this particular user. So let's send this request to the server. And then here you are getting no response body and 204 no content that you are getting. It means the user this particular user ID and this particular user from the database got deleted and we are sending with the 204 no content and we don't have any information about this particular user. So that's why there is no response body because what kind of response body that you want to send because with this user does not have any information. It's totally deleted from the server from the uh, database side. So that's what we are getting 204 uh, no content. Remember important for interview point of view. Generally it is used for the delete call. Then let's, let's talk about three access redirection calls or the redirectional uh, status code. Very important. Let's talk about first 301 moved permanently. Sometimes you hit any URL or any application you really want to access. You hit the URL and you are getting a message that, okay, this application is not more no more available on this particular URI. It's completely moved to a different URI. So you are getting a URI information or some URL also you are getting in the form of response. So in that way, Server will send a, a response that, okay, yeah, 301 moved permanently. And then it will give you the bunch of URLs and the URIs also. And then you have to click on that URI and then you have to redirect to that particular URI. So let's say today you are working on abc.com and now the domain got changed. And instead of abc.com, now it is abcd.com. So now server will send a response 301 moved permanently. So in that case, you will be getting this particular message. What is 302 found? Request resource resides temporarily under a different URI. And since the redirection might be altered on occasion, the client should continue to use the request URI for the future request. It's saying, okay, fine. There are some redirections are available and that is like temporary under a different URI. It might be possible that, okay, we will be moving to a new URI. So please use these URIs. It might be possible that, okay, later on, maybe after some time, uh, we are completely moving to the new URI. So in that case, we will be getting 302 found. What is 304 not modified? 304 not modified means especially with the get request and access is allowed, but the document has not been modified. It means, let's see, especially in case of conflicts. So what happens? See the, let's see the description. 
If the client has performed a conditional GET request and access is allowed, but the document has not been modified, the server should respond with the status code 304. So for example, let's go to this particular diagram. I don't have any practical API for this because it's a very rare case. I'm sending a request, a GET request to the server. I'm saying, okay, I'm looking for the user information is let's say equal to Naveen, user ID 123 and name is equal to Naveen, something like that. Server says, okay, fine, this user has not been changed in the database. All the information that you were getting earlier, exactly same information that you are having it, better you go to the cache, some cache server and get the uh, data from there. Instead of me to process this particular data, you can directly get the data from the cache so that you can save some time because user data has not been updated at all. It's exactly the same thing. So in, in that case, you are getting 304 not modified, okay? Then some redirections are also available. You can see temporary redirection and then 308 uh, permanent redirection. So these are not important. What is the difference between uh, moved permanently and a permanent redirection? So 307 means the temporary redirection automatically redirection will happen. But in case of uh, 301, in case of 301, you are getting just the URA information that, okay, yeah, this uh, server is completely moved or permanently moved to the new URA, please access that. Here, the request resource resides temporarily under a different URA. Since the redirection may be altered on occasion, the client should continue to use the request URI for the future request. Temporary redirection, it will automatically redirect to the specific new URI. Generally, most of the time we use always 301, moved permanently. Same thing is permanent redirection also. You don't need to click on the URI. It will automatically redirect to the new URI. And this is again one experimental thing. So you can just ignore that part. It's not that important. Then 4xx family, which is very important. Like uh, if client is doing some mistake while sending a request uh, to the server. For example, let's see 400 bad request. This will be maybe some... Let's say you are passing a wrong JSON payload and the URI syntax error is there and the comma is missing in the payload or something like that. So in this case, you will be getting a 400 bad request. It means you have done something wrong. It means from the client side, you have done something wrong. Maybe some syntax error in the URI or maybe some JSON that you are sending or maybe some XML that you are sending that is a wrong XML or wrong JSON. Then from the server side, you will be getting a 400 bad request. Please improve the request. 401 unauthorized, this is again very important. Unauthorized means you are not authorized to access that particular uh, resource. It means that your authentication got failed. The, whatever the username, password or a token or the API token that you are passing, maybe that token got expired. That's why it is totally unauthorized a request that you are sending to the server. We will not allow you to access that. So that's what we are getting unauthorized. I'll show you an example. For example, let's go back to the postman. And I'll do one thing, let's say this is my, um, what exactly, this is a token that I'm sending with every request. I'm going to delete this particular token. So let's remove it and then I'm going to save it. Okay. And let's try to add uh, data once again. So I'm going to add this particular user once again. Let's say I'm just changing the email ID and sending the request to the server. When I send the request to the server, let's see it's saying 401 unauthorized because you are not authorized, authentication failed because Along with the request, the kind of the token that you are passing, it's missing over here, or maybe the token got expired or something like that. So again, I'll put the token here and then let's see, save this particular collection once again, and let's create this particular user once again. So let's try to create that. This time it should not give you 401 unauthorized. It should give you 201 because this time the beer token that you are passing, it's absolutely correct. And the token is valid and we are authorized now. So if you're not authorized from the client side, client is giving a wrong token or wrong email ID and the password or the username password or expired token or missing token. In that case, you will be getting 401 unauthorized. Important one, remember this thing. Then what about 404 not found? 404 not found is also very common. Whenever you are, let's see, sending a request to the server and let's see that particular data is not available, that user is not available in the database. You're looking for some uh, product, let's see, from Amazon.com. So it will give you 404 not found error from the server side to the client side. That, okay, yes, uh, that particular resource is not available. So in this case, you will be getting 404 not found. For example, let's see, I'm going to hit this particular uh, a get call. And I'm saying, okay, let's take this one. Okay, this particular user. So let's see, I'm looking for a user, something like this over here. 
this is a user ID. And you never know that, okay, this, let's see, this user ID is not available. So let's see what is the response code that we are getting. It's saying resource not found, 404 not found, because this user is not at all available. So please pass the correct user ID or correct user information while sending the request to the server. So in that case, you will be getting 404 not found. Then there are some other things also. Let's see method not found. Let's see it should be a get call, but you are passing with the post call. It should be a post call, but you are passing with the get call. So in that case, 404 method not found error or response code will be sent it back to you. Okay. Now let's talk about, uh, see, there are various things. You don't need to uh, remember each and every status code, but 403 forbidden also let me tell you, what do you mean by this? 403 forbidden means C. The server understood your request, but it is refusing to fulfill it. An authorization will not help and the request should not be repeated. What do you mean by this? It means, let's see, you are a normal user, a simple customer user. You are sending a request to the Amazon or any application server and you are getting 403 forbidden and you are trying to access all the administrative or admin user uh, modules or admin user functionality. In that case, server understood your request, but server is refusing it to fulfill it because you are not authorized. So I know that, okay, you are the right user. You, you are the customer. You are the user, which is already available in amazon.com or in any system. I understood that, okay, you are the, uh, you are the right user and the user information is already with us, but we are not going to serve you because you are not authorized to do that. Right? So in this case, you will be getting 403 forbidden. This is just like, let's say I'm the normal user and trying to access the seller information or admin information that I cannot access that. I cannot change the administrative, uh, the way admin, admin guy or admin user is changing the settings. So I cannot change it. So in that way, 403 forbidden error. Remember the difference between this 403 and 404 is what? 404 means the user is not at all available with us and the token is not at all available with us. The kind of username password that you are passing, it's totally expired or is totally not valid and not available with us. In that case, it will give you 404 not found. 403 forbidden is very similar to this one. This is again authentication issue. You are not authorized to access the admin user uh, modules or admin user features because you are just a normal user. You don't have any permission for that. So this is a kind of more of a permission issue. You are getting 403 forbidden error or response code. Okay. Then you can, there are many other things that also you can see that length required request timeout. In that case, you will be getting 408 expectation failed like that. Okay. These are the basic stuff that is available. You don't do remember each and everything, but these are the important ones. Now let's quickly talk about 500 server error. It means from the server side, something happened. The most important one is that it's the internal server error. Server encountered an expected con unexpected condition, which is preventing it from fulfilling the request. Server may be server got crashed or maybe server is so busy or server is not able to understand that particular request or maybe server is uh, uh, not up and running completely or maybe that particular server is uh, service is down or well, let's say this microservice is down in that case you will be getting 500 internal server error over here it means the problem not with the client client is absolutely correct and sending the right request to the server but maybe the server could not uh, able to fulfill that particular request because maybe because of any reason that you cannot solve it with the help of your code or coding that you are writing, right? It's not problem with the client, the problem with the server side, maybe server is not up and running, maybe server down. In that case, you will be getting internal server problem 500. Okay. You will be getting it. Then what do you mean by 500 not implemented? The server does not support the functionality required to fulfill the request. It means we don't have any understanding about that uh, request. And it is not implemented at the server side also. In that case, let's see that particular service is not at all available. That feature is not at all available. And still you are requesting from the client side to the server. In that case, server will respond back, not implemented. 502, same thing with the bad gateway that acting as a gateway or a proxy and then receive an invalid response from the upstream server. So let's see you are uh, intermediately, let's see you have a proxy server. So this proxy server is communicating with some other server. And from this particular server side, you are not getting the proper response. Proxy server will give you this particular response back with a 502 bad gateway. So in such cases, you will be getting bad gateway error. Let's see service unavailable. As I told you that that is again 503, again coming from the 5X family. Server is currently unable to handle the request due to temporarily overloading or maintenance of the server. 
So that's what you are getting. Sometimes you see, okay, yeah, service unavailable. You hit any uh, specific application or URL, you are getting this particular service is down and not available right now. Maybe because of some maintenance is having or maybe some temporary issue or something like that. So in this case, you will be getting service unavailable over here. So there are various, see, gateway timeout, HTTP version not supported. You are sending HTTP 1. Uh, let's see, uh, 1.2.0 uh, or something like this. And that HTTP version is not supported from the server. In that case, you will be getting 505. Again, which is a very, very rare case. That is what you are using it. Okay, generally, we don't use this one 505 or something like this. Let's see, gateway timeout. It means the server either does not recognize the request method or it lacks the ability to fulfill the request. Okay, so I could not recognize your request. Uh, let's you're sending a request to the API gateway or something, and then server could not understand that. And after a few seconds, a timeout has happened, and then uh, server is responding back with the 504 gateway timeout error over there. Okay, specified by URL like HTTP, FTP, LDAP, something like this. Okay, so these are the important uh, response code. Everyone should know about it. I would not encourage you to learn you know, each and every status code to remember actually. It's good to know that, okay, most of the status code that you are actually aware of it because at a time of interview, most of the people, they will be asking these top 10, 12, uh, you know, response code. And you should know that what exactly the major reason behind that. So please give the practical answers, right answers at a time of interview with these status code properly. I hope it's clear. I'll do one thing. I'll share this URL with you guys and just please have a look. Please try to do some experiment with your postman, open your postman, try to hit a couple of APIs and try to observe the status code. What kind of a status code you are getting from the server side when you're sending a wrong request or a bad request or something like this, or maybe a local host server is running, you can shut down and then you try to observe that, okay, is it uh, giving you the response or you're getting 500 internal error or something like that. I hope it's clear. And um, that's all for this particular video, guys. Please subscribe to the channel. There are many new things are coming to this uh, uh, in this particular series, many new series that we are going to start very soon. So I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.